today we'll talk about blender numbers and all the things that you need to know about this whole graph thing that is waving around the internet that has to do with blender and the metrics that they've generated over a period of time Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we have news and today's news actually deals with Blender and a whole lot of data that they've released in a very recent blog post that has to do with Blender by the numbers. This blog post is only dated from 2007 all the way to 2019. And there's a whole lot of data in case you want to, you know, know what's going on, how many people get to make use of Blender on yearly basis. If you want to know how much people get to invest the demographic people under what age makes use of blender more all of those details if you want to get all of these details i'm going to link this in the description so you can check it out meanwhile we're going to have a small conversation about it i would still like to know what you guys think about it now previously blender used to be a very simple tool that people just simply play with and then it was considered as a tool that only hobbyists get to work with but i think the narrative is beginning to change over a period of time owing to the fact that there is now an immense or should i say a heavy investment in terms of funding and development coming over to blender and if you simply take a look at the graph which we have directly here you would see that all the way from 2005 over to 2019 that the downloads have tripled now it has tripled over a period of time as right now you can see that there is now about 1 million downloads per month which is doubling down over 10 million times that people get to download blender in 2019 and we're looking at this data right now and i'm thinking um this definitely is not exactly you just hitting the download button and getting a copy and it, you know max it as one i kind of think that this is a unique download that is going on here the unique download in the sense that you know you go over to blender you hit the download button it registers your ip and if you seem to download a different build a different version it still retains that single one as just one simple user i think that is actually how this thing works and on the other hand if you also take a look at the steam graph which they have directly here you would also notice that people get to work with steam a little bit more right now compared to what it used to look like before i mean from the graph from 2015 over to 2019 and slightly into 2020 you can start seeing that we have about 55,000 followers on steam and on average right now it's looking like blender users are spending a total amount of 25 hours to work with blender and of course the demographic itself is increasing owing to the fact that people are now investing more and more time even people over the age of 50 are still investing more time working with blender and we can start seeing all of this demographic thing working based off the analytics that youtube generates and also analytics that you can get on steam and probably microsoft store and all that stuff i'm not saying blender takes your data but i think these ones just like they stated them directly here are metrics and data that they've collected from all of all these channels and this is actually not where the boost is i think one of the boosts for blender is coming from the social media social media in terms of youtube like this and also you know every other channel that you can find that has to do with things like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and so on. And I think because Blender for the fact that it's free and it has a huge community of people that are highly, highly dedicated to getting things out. I'm not talking about the viral videos, which are actually making Blender off the roof, but I'm talking about educational content and things that, you know, people pour out their hearts, their time to actually create and these things are things that are making more and more people dive into blender the fact that you have one or two problems and you go online you, you actually lay your complaints down there and there's a huge community of people trying to help you out i think this on its own is definitely something that would make blender one of the best tools in 2020 of course it has actually ranked amongst every other tool in 2019 as the most downloaded the most used and the most talked about and i guess this is also something that will continue in 2020 the development talk platform has also increased over a period of time with more and more users and moderators coming in and i think this is based off the funding that blender has been getting over the years i mean since the announcement of 2.8 the funding of blender has actually tripled or you know it has gone overboard with a lot of people as individual members donating 
and a lot of contribution going over to the Blender Foundation. And last year, we did see companies trying to get into Blender and donate to the foundation and at the same time, trying as much as possible to sponsor this foundation in every way possible. And we did see them in various categories from silver to bronze to corporate and so on and so forth. And in case you want to get this data and actually read things out for yourself, of course, I'm going to put a link in the description. And while we're still talking about this, there has also been a couple of news going up and down Blender recently, which we have not really had the time to talk about so i think this is actually a very good time to talk about them so rococo itself now has a default add-on that you can now work with in case you want to work with blender and you know instead of going through the different channels to get your motion capture data from rococo suit over to blender you can now do these things directly in here and we're beginning to see a lot of developments from the 2.83 side of things which we've covered most of them in the channel and also recently we also did see the vdb thing coming over to blender 2.83 and of course i'm going to talk about the vdb improvements that's coming over to blender 2.83 sooner than later we've also seen on real engine merging trying to create that you know that bridge so that you can send things from you know, blender over to unreal engine and that actually makes a lot of sense of course we've talked about unreal engine and a couple of things that we're doing on the channel and it's really good to see that they are beginning to put ties together to work with blender and speaking about other things that we will probably get to see is you know redshift so hopefully redshift is going to be coming out this year we actually have no idea what the, what's going on but i'm very very optimistic that by the end of this year redshift will be coming over to blender and we've also seen a couple of third party companies trying to create you know plugins for blender as well so blender itself has grown beyond leaps and bounds and it's very very interesting to see that it's beginning to gather steam and of course with the way blender is going hopefully by the end of 2020 there is going to be a whole lot of gist that would have about this too of course i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section do you agree with the chats coming from blender foundation which of these new improvements are you mostly excited about tell me what you think about 2.82 which will be coming out very very soon and what are your excitements about 2.83 i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section and of course if you like this video you learned something from it you can go ahead and hit the like button and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing if you can hit the subscribe button and and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace